Remember how we would store away a bowl of milk in the night and then magically it would turn into a bowl of curd in the morning? Well, it's not magic. If anything, it's bacteria. In this video, we're going to find out how bacteria turns milk into curd, what makes curd so thick and creamy, and why is it so good for our health. First off, to make curd or yogurt, the milk needs to be heated to about 80 degrees Celsius for around 10 to 20 minutes. Now, this heating, it kills off all, it not only kills off all the specific pathogens and microbes, but it also breaks down the proteins in the milk. Now, the significance of this breakdown, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Now that we've gotten rid of all the pathogens and stuff, we can easily go ahead and add our yogurt producing bacteria, right? Wrong. We cannot add them. Not just yet. Before we add our uh, yogurt producing bacteria into the milk, we need to make sure that the milk has been cooled down to about 40 degrees Celsius first. Why? Because our yogurt producing bacteria, they thrive in very specific warm temperatures so if the milk is so if the milk is boiling hot or if it is freezing cold then our bacteria is not going to survive that and we wouldn't get any curd or yogurt whatsoever so once we have made sure that our milk is down to our desired 40 degrees celsius that's when we're going to go ahead and add our yogurt producing bacteria aka the starter culture so this is called the starter culture starter culture now the starter culture it is full of these bacteria called the lactic acid bacteria lactic acid bacteria or you can call it lab for short what these lactic acid bacteria are going to do is that they will eat away the lactose, which is the sugar that is present in the milk, and produce lactic acid via this process called fermentation. As more and more lactic acid gets produced, the milk becomes acidic in nature, so much so that the pH drops to about 4. And it is this acid, this lactic acid, which is going to give the yogurt its tangy, soury flavor. Now, this is where things start to get a little weird. All that lactic acid in the milk slowly causes it to lump together or coagulate. This event where the milk starts clumping together is called curdling. But why? Why is this happening in the first place? What is this lactic acid doing to the milk to make it curdle so much? Okay, so let's make a little bit of space here first. All right. So milk is made up of three things. There's water, then there's there are fats and then there are proteins. The main milk protein is called casein and it has a negative charge all around it whenever it is present in water. I'll just zoom in into this a little bit so that we can talk while we talk about this. Okay. So these casein molecule, it has this negative charge all around itself whenever it is present in water. And we just found out that, you know, there is water in uh, the milk. And since negatively charged things always repel each other, these casein molecules, they stay suspended in the milk far away from the other casein molecules or far away from each other. Now, things get a little interesting when lactic acid comes into the mix. You see, acids react with water to give out these positively charged hydrogen ions. So, when our bacteria produces all that lactic acid, it reacts with the water in the milk to give out these H+, like this entire bunch or this whole bunch of H+, ions. And now, these positively charged hydrogen ions are going to uh, go ahead and latch on to these, neg this neg these negatively charged uh, casein molecules present in the milk. And because of that, what happens is they end up neutralizing the charge of this casein molecule. So now, since there's no more charge present on the casein molecules to keep them apart anymore, these casein molecules, they come together and they form this clump. They start clumping together. And that is why milk 
starts coagulating or that is why curdling basically happens. Now you would want to ask me this question that, hey, you just told me about this uh, protein breakdown thing that happens when heating, uh, when I was heating the milk. W what was all that about? You said you're going to tell me the significance of that. So the significance of that is that other than casein, there are other proteins in the milk too. I mean, they are, they are in very, very low numbers or it's the uh, quantity is really less, but they are still there. And these proteins are called the whey proteins. Now, these whey proteins are very um, susceptible or they're vulnerable to heat. So whenever they uh, come in contact with heat or if you heat these proteins, then they kind of fall apart. And because of that, they also start clumping together. But you won't see this happening when you're boiling a pot full of milk because the content of whey protein in milk is much, much less compared to the content of casein. It is all of this coagulation that gives yogurt its thick, uh, creamy uh, texture to it. Now, other than being a world-class desert, yogurt or curd is also a very rich source of something called probiotics or live microbes that keep us healthy. Uh, you see these lactic acid bacteria like uh, lactobacillus or streptococcus they they are the good guys of the microbe world they they actually help us in breaking down the food and even in the absorption of food and they even help us fight off different pathogens so that's why we are told to have yogurt more often because you have these live bacteria in the yogurt itself and, and consuming these live bacteria uh, helps our digestion in keeping our digestive system uh, healthy and it makes sure that it stays healthy as well. And that's not all. Some of these lactobacillus species, they, they produce this uh, vitamin called B12 or, or it's also called cobalamin. And that's a big deal because we humans, we cannot produce this vitamin uh, all by ourselves. We can't produce it naturally. So if we have this bacteria with us, then we'll have this source of vitamin B12 production within us. And uh, why is that necessary? Because the deficiency of vitamin B12 uh, might lead to these dangerous diseases like anemia or even cardiovascular disease. And this is just the tip of the iceberg because we have an in, there's this whole huge list of benefits that we get from probiotics alone. So having these microorganisms or having these bacteria inside of us is far more beneficial than you can possibly imagine.